Atlas, and we welcome you to the Thomas and Mack Center just off the Vegas Strip for a much anticipated main event. 12 rounds of featherweight action. 36 minutes still ahead of him here, round one of 12. Protect yourself. He clinches when he gets to the inside. Get him, get him. With a matchup like this, Teddy, a boxer versus brawler, who do you really have more confidence in that they can pull off the win? You know, in one way, you could say the brawler because he's got that eraser. He can pull it out of the fire, but I'm going to go with the guy who's probably more rounded athletically has to do more things because he didn't have that great gift of power. He's had to learn to do other things. And if he's forced to fight in the spot, those other things aren't working, he'll be able to do that. by Foster. That's classic counterpunching. Yeah, what he did was he pulled that right shoulder back. You know, he just pulled it back, gave him the left shoulder, and then gave him the right hand. Reaching the halfway mark of this round. Vicious's punch didn't come close. He engages in the clinch. Hit the body. And now looking to hang on. Parries that punch intended for the head. Blocks that punch. Foster's just punching air that time. His opponent was able to get out of the way. Move your head. Final 10 seconds of round number one. He scored well after being hit himself. And the bell rings, signifying the end of the round. Foster's missing punches. I mean, there's just no way to sugarcoat it. His accuracy isn't there. And there's a reason for it, Joe. His punches are the wide variety. And wide punches get what? They don't find the mark. They're not accurate. Some fine fundamentals, good counterpunch. Nice mousetrap there, he let him in beautifully. He didn't use cheese, he used distance. Oh. <laughs> Unable to score with the hook. Good defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault. Foster's defense is paying off now. Well, supposed to be fighting, but instead he's hugging. The last thing either guy wants to be here, Teddy, is one-dimensional. The last thing you want to be in anything to be successful is one-dimensional. I mean, if you're a comedian, you don't want to be saying the same jokes all the time. Your crowd's not going to be there. Well, your opponent is going to be there all night long if you do the same thing. He just missed that shot up top. 
halfway through round number two. Well, you could see what he wanted to do there, but unable to land that body shot. Vicious's defense, is it ever good? Look at how easy he's able to block those punches. What? What? Get in there! Get in there! Oh, and a big right hand lands. There it is! Oh, and he goes down for the first time tonight. Foster's going to keep taking this test, rising up after being knocked down. He took a shot, but he gives one of his own. A left hand scores. Gets rid of that. It was intended for his head. Good clean shot, returning fire. Well done by Foster. Last 10 seconds. So he scores a knockdown in the last round. Now he gets to settle down and gather himself a bit. Do you go after it? Do you get super aggressive here having had your man hurt? Or do you still have to employ a certain amount of caution? It's kind of like being at the carnival. You know, you just you just hit the bullseye and you got that big, big stuffed animal you can give to your wife or your girlfriend. But now he doesn't want you to go away with that. Oh, no. No, no. no. He tells you, wait a minute, try again. You could trade that in for something even bigger. But you might lose the one you have already. That's the question. off the mark by Foster. Bazooka is trying to get back in this round after being knocked down in the last round. But with just 60 seconds between rounds, Teddy, how much can really happen? How much can really benefit a fighter who was knocked down? Well, a lot has to happen. First of all, you hit him with that sponge. Some cold water on top of the head where you revigorate him a little bit. You know, get his senses back a little bit. And you have to talk to him. Once he calms down, once you physically get him back on track, you look to see if he's okay, and then you have to tell him why he got dropped to begin with. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. Not much action as he just ties up. Oh, and he returns fire with a left hand. You got this one. Bazooka's punch is far off the target. Vicious's knowledge of the game is showing through. Three ways to defend. One of them is to block. He did it there well. This is brilliant defense we're seeing here every which way. Blocking punches, moving well, parrying punches away. Yeah, he's doing a great job. Now he has to connect the offense a little bit better. A little something for his opponent after getting tagged. He took a go of it to the body but came up empty. Ten seconds to go in this round. Keep it up. 
up. And that's the end of round three. This is what I need you to do. Keep shooting that jab to his chest. His hands will drop. Then follow with the power shot. Keep this guy off balance. Half start doubling. Okay, listen. You can throw him off with some head movement. That's it. Throw him off with head movement. Vicious is in complete control of this fight early on here. Teddy, he's up three zip on your scorecards, but even more important than that, he may be able to end this fight. He's put his man down on the canvas. Well, his opponent keeps squaring up with him, giving him a lot of surface, and he's finding that surface. Bazooka's got a way of just getting away from that punch. Punch, punch! Keep doing what you're doing! with one of his own. Good work by Foster. Yep, yep. Here's one for you now, he says. Right back with the left hand. way to protect the midsection. Relax. 90 Relax. seconds to go in round number four. <laughs> and now just wasting everybody's time holding on. Dismisses his opponent's headshot. Foster's right hand scores well. Able to get away from that headshot with the block. Unable to land clean by Foster. That's it, just like that. See, he's got his guard up really well that time, and it protects his head. Ten seconds to go in the fourth. A target on his head, and he places the hook right on it. End of the round here, and as I glance around ringside and look at the judges, I'm wondering what they're writing down because that was a tough round to score. Yeah, it was, and you know, it's the kind of round where one guy would be really smart to take a page out of the book of Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, where Leonard stole rounds at the end, where he just clipped off 30 seconds, and that's exactly what the judges remembered. Well, his opponent is opening up and coming forward, so I would think there are some opportunities that exist. Yeah, I think some counter-punching opportunities. Opportunities not on the front end, but on the back end. Keep moving! Keep moving! <laughs> 
That hook was well off the mark. Good return fire that time. Still plenty of time to work here in round number five. A minute and a half to go. Showing you that sublime skill right now with that two punch combo. Foster's doing a poor job. There's no other way to really say it. I mean, he's sitting there trying to stay committed to being a counter puncher, but in the meantime, the fight is getting away from him in a big way. Yeah, he needs a plan B right now. Bazooka's in bad shape. Foster's in a tough spot here. He could go down with that bad defense. And you can see he wanted to do that as he holds on there. Missed the body shot. Final 10 seconds. Keep moving. Gotta be Zeno. Come in. So as that round ends, it gives us pause to realize what has just taken place, and that is. We have one man who just separated himself from the other. He was able to stun his opponent, and you gotta think good things are coming. Well, they've been coming for a while because I really think that those punches are a benefit from a couple rounds ago. He's been hitting with a lot of punches, and I think it's starting to take its toll, and you saw it there. Just ate a big uppercut. He's in bad shape. Foster's giving his opponent headaches here now. He's throwing punches, but he's able to block them away. Vicious's defense has been just unbelievable tonight. I mean, Teddy, you take such appreciation seeing a guy putting forth his craft like this. Yeah, you do, and that's why he's able to have such a long career. That's why he's able to be, you know, so consistently good because he doesn't take a lot. He doesn't get worn out. He's fresh. Turn that hook over, but couldn't turn it into a connect. In and out, in and out. Oh, and he crashes to the canvas once again. He's gotten up before. What about this time? <gasps> Foster's gonna have to pull himself together here. Now he beat the count, but still a lot of work to do. Yeah, a lot of work because he doesn't have the benefit of his legs. Can't move around there wobbly right now. So what he's gotta do is grab on a little bit and walk. Walk to the ropes, kill some time, make the referee come in between you and break you. Nowhere close that punch by Foster. Foster's been able to let loose. He's throwing punches. He's just not landing enough of them. Well, he's throwing them from a little too far away. He's not getting into that punching chamber. He's starting to launch him just a little too soon, and his opponent is warned. Big shot. Can he beat the count? I don't think so. 
here, Teddy. Now I know where they got that saying, falling like a sack of potatoes. here. Unable to go the distance, he couldn't rise up and beat the count. Vicious is fitting end to a very strong night for him. There is a business component to this game here this boxing game and the business component is yeah you got to win but you want to win spectacularly you want to get people interested excited he just did that thanks for being with us everybody for teddy atlas i'm joe tessitore have yourself a great night